Hey guys, welcome back to part 12 of the Decker tutorial. So in the last video we learned how to use different scopes by creating our own scope annotations. But we also learned that by default, all scope annotations work exactly the same as the singleton annotation. They tell Decker to only create a single instance of an object within the same component and reuse it whenever it is requested. Ultimately, we are responsible for realizing these scopes by creating and releasing our components in the correct places. Because again, Decker components are nothing but simple Java objects that hold our dependencies. So in our example we created an app component that gets instantiated in the onCreate method of the application class and lives as long as the application lives and an activity component that shares the lifecycle of the main activity. This means our app component can provide application-wide singletons that can be reused for the whole lifetime of the app Whereas the activity component can only create local singletons that lives as long as the activity lives, but not longer than that. And to scope these objects to their corresponding component and reuse the same instance, we annotated both the object and the component that provides it with the appropriate scope annotation. We want to reuse the same driver throughout the whole lifetime of the app, so we annotated the drivers provide method with add singleton and added the same annotation to the app component. And we also want to reuse the same car instance, but only in the lifecycle of the main activity. So we annotated both the car class and the activity component with our own per activity annotation. And to allow our activity component to use the driver object of the app component, we declared the app component as a dependency of the activity component with this dependencies attribute. And then we had to pass the app component instance to our activity component builder when we instantiated it. This is how we connected these two components, so we can use objects of different scopes together. There was one more step we had to do. We had to explicitly expose the driver through a provision method in our app component to allow the activity component to use it. If we would remove this method, our project wouldn't compile anymore, because our activity component wouldn't know where it can get a driver from. Also, if we would add any other objects to our app component, besides just a driver, our activity component wouldn't be able to access these objects unless we also expose them explicitly through such a provision method. But there is also a second way of connecting our two components. Instead of declaring our app component as a dependency of our activity component, we can also turn this activity component into a subcomponent of the app component. And the difference is that a subcomponent can access all the objects of the parent component. In other words, we can remove this driver method here. If we turn our activity component into a subcomponent, it will be able to access the whole dependency graph of the app component without us having to expose any of them explicitly. So let's see how we can do this. And in case you missed it, in the last video we updated the version number of the Dagger dependency to 2.22 and the same for the annotation processor dependency. So do this now if you haven't yet. And then we go into our activity component which we want to turn into a subcomponent now. A subcomponent has its own annotation. So we change component to a subcomponent. Now this is red because subcomponents don't have dependencies. So we delete this part. And we also change the petrol engine module to the diesel engine module. And the reason for this is I want to get rid of this builder here for this example. Subcomponents also have builders, but we will cover this separately in the next video. So we put a comment around this. No need to delete it, because if you remember, when we use our diesel engine module, we don't need these binds instance dependencies, because our diesel engine module gets the horsepower provided through the constructor. And then we go into the app component, where we can delete this driver method, because as I already said, we don't need this anymore. Our subcomponent will be able to access the driver of the app component without us having to expose it explicitly. What we instead need is a method that returns our activity component and we call it get activity component. Again, the name doesn't matter, only the return type is important. We put a semicolon behind it. And up until now, we got the implementation for our activity component through the generated Decker activity component class. But after we rebuild our project, the Stagger Activity Component class will disappear. Instead, it will be generated as an inner class in our Decker App Component. You will see how this looks in a moment. We have to go once again back into our App Component, because we also have to pass an argument to this method. And that is the Diesel Engine module. We have to pass all modules to this method that are not abstract and don't have a default constructor. So our Activity Component has a Wheels module and a Diesel Engine module. Wheels module is abstract and doesn't take any arguments, 
but the diesel engine module takes the horsepower as a constructor argument. And the same as before, we have to pass it at runtime. Only that this time we do this over this method argument. If you have more modules with constructor arguments, then you just add them to this method declaration. But here we only have this one. And this is called a factory method. There's also another way of getting our subcomponent implementation without this factory method, but we will learn about this in the next video. And then we go into our main activity and delete this whole part, because as said, our Decker activity component won't exist anymore. Instead, we get our activity component from our app component, which as usual we get by casting get application to our example app, calling our get app component getter method. Then we call our newly created get activity component and pass a new diesel engine module, which wants a horsepower value. We don't even have to call build because this method already returns the finished component. And that's already it. It might seem a bit confusing at first, but if you repeat this three or four times, it will be very understandable. The only difference is that we get our activity component directly through our app component because it's not a separate class anymore. It's an inner class of the app component. When we run this, we will get a little compile time error because we still have this Decker activity component import statement. But since this class doesn't exist anymore, we have to delete it and then we start it again. Here we see our usual log messages. And when we rotate the device, we will see the same as in the last video. We still have our application-wide driver singleton. So we will see the exact same instances as here, but we will get two new cars. And it still works. And again, the main difference now is that we don't have to expose the driver in our app component. And if we add any other objects to our app component, we don't have to explicitly expose them either. Our activity component is automatically able to access all of them. And you can chain them up even more. You can also create a subcomponent of the activity component, for example, in the scope of a fragment. And let's also take a look into the generated code again to see how this is realized. This is our get activity component method, which returns a new activity component implementation. And this is simply an inner class in the Decker app component class, which implements our activity component. So this is the same as our Decker activity component before. But now, since it's a non-static inner class of the app component, it can access all the objects of the app component. And we can see this down here. It gets a driver by calling Decker app component dot this to get to the outer class dot provide driver provider. If we would scope the driver to the pair activity scope instead of singleton, this line here would change. Then the provide driver provider would be a member variable in its own class just as the provide engine provider and provide wheels provider. I think this is pretty easy to understand. It's just an inner class. In the next video, we will learn about subcomponents a bit more, but there is one more thing I want to clarify here, because some of you have been wondering, why do we have to create these different scope annotations? Why can't we just put singleton on all of them? Because ultimately they all work the same. They just create a single instance within the same component. One reason is to make sure that we don't put a module into the wrong component. Because if our provide driver method had a pair activity annotation, it wouldn't make sense to turn this into a singleton in our app component. By having the same scope annotation on both of them, we can make sure that it's actually in the right component. But these different annotations get even more important when we use constructor injection together with subcomponents. To show you what I mean, I will make a few changes, but I will revert them in a minute, so you don't have to follow along. Just keep it as it is and watch the rest of the video. So I remove this driver module. And instead, I give the driver an add inject annotated constructor. Now Decker is still able to provide this driver object because with an add inject constructor, we don't need a module. But now if we wanted to scope this driver and we only had one scope annotation, we wouldn't have a way to tell Decker to which component we want to scope this driver. Because now we don't have our driver module in the app component anymore. How would we tell Dagger that we want this to be instantiated in the app component or in the activity component? And in fact, now on the driver class, we could put both the singleton or the per activity annotation. This would have a different effect. So we need these different annotations to tell Dagger to which component we want to scope an object. But again, I will revert this. And as usual, you will find a link to the code for this example in the description box below. If this was helpful, please leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe for upcoming parts of the Decker tutorial. Take care.